Now, I'm going to go back to what we did to reduce the matrix. Uh, remember that our first step here was to multiply the first equation by one half. Well, we get the matrix, which we'll call E1, and that stands for the elementary matrix, and one it just happens to be the first elementary matrix. We're going to get four of them. Okay. Our elementary matrix is what you get when you multiply the first row, row one, and it's hard to read that. It says, of the identity I had to insert that I didn't really write it, then I decided I needed to. Okay, we multiply the first row of the identity by one half. So that is, we multiplied the first row of this by one half. Okay, we're going to multiply the first row of the identity by one half. Now, the identity is this. We multiply the first row by one half. We don't really have to write out the calculation, do we? We get one half zero. So we have that. Second row is undisturbed. Then we multiply E1 by our A matrix, and you can verify this product. Here's E1, here's the A matrix, and here's the result. And this result matches what we have here, doesn't it? So that was kind of neat. We did the operation to the identity matrix that we did to this matrix in order to get this, giving us this matrix, which we then multiplied by our original matrix to get this matrix. Okay, well, this always works. So, we go on. Um, get this board up here. Our next step. Okay, well, first of all, just to summarize where we were, we know that E1 times A was this. We multiplied E1 by A, and we got this. Now, what's our next step here? We added negative 3 times this row to this row in order to get a 0 here. And we got all this. Okay, well, our E2 matrix, we're going to add negative 3 times the first row of your identity matrix, your 2 by 2 identity matrix I2, to the second row. And uh, we do that, and that takes the identity matrix. We add negative 3 times the first row to the second row, Here's what we get. First row is undisturbed, second row becomes this. That's our E2 matrix. If we multiply our E2 matrix by the matrix that we got here, our E1A matrix turns out. Well, our E1A matrix is this, our E2 matrix is this, and you can verify this product. And we see that this matrix agrees with the matrix we have here to the left of the vertical line. Okay, well, what did we do next? We multiplied this matrix, uh, the second row of this matrix, by negative one-eighth. So, we multiply negative one-eighth by the second row of the identity matrix. Now, right of I2, and we get this. Second row is, you know, zero, one, we multiply, we get zero, negative one-eighth. Okay, that's our E3 matrix, and we multiply that by what we had here, and this was our E2 times E1A matrix. So we get E3 times this, and there's our E3, there's this matrix, and you can verify that the result is this, which is identical to this. Okay? So we just keep doing whatever operation it takes to get the next step in reducing our matrix. We do that to the identity matrix and multiply by that matrix, multiply our last result by that matrix. Okay, so our last step was to add negative one times this to this to get the zero. So we add, I'm sorry, negative two times this to this to get the zero. So we add negative two times the second to the first on the identity matrix, and here's the matrix we get. We multiply that by the matrix we had before, and of course the matrix we had before was E3 times E2 times E1A. So we get E4 times E3 times E2 times E1A, and we do the calculation, and we find that we do get the identity. Okay, so that's pretty neat, but it seems like a lot of trouble to go to just to reduce the matrix. Well, if all we're trying to do is reduce the matrix, we wouldn't have bothered. But it turns out that these elementary matrices, uh, uh, basically what you're doing is you're factoring the matrix into primes. 
very similar to factoring a number into its prime factors. You're factoring the matrix into elementary matrices. And as I hope you know, uh, it's important to be able to factor numbers into their prime factors. Uh, it helps you find common denominators, least common denominators, or least common multiples, among other things. And that's just that's the application people should be aware of uh, before they come into this course through their prerequisite courses. Not sure they are because um, fractions aren't being taught very well. But uh, that's the one application you would know, but the applications are numerous. Number theory is a, a, a huge subject. So we've basically factored the matrix into the product E4 times, well, we haven't really factored the matrix yet. What we've done is we've got the factors of the inverse matrix, but we'll see how that works out. Okay? And then, um, well, well, we'll go from there.